Hey, what's going on guys? So today we're going to talk about the end of the 2018 season, a little bit of a wrap up, uh, what I have planned moving forward, uh, some little derailments we'll talk about, and all that fun stuff. So I just finished Tampa a week and a half ago, and I ended the season on high note. That was my goal going into the show. You know, I had no expectations or placings or anything like that. It was about me just trying to bring the best physique possible. Uh, as I've talked about, I took over my own prep, so that was really paramount. To kind of to prove to myself that I know my body as well as anybody else, and to prove to prospective clients that I know what the fuck I'm doing, basically. Um, so, went out to Tampa, I got there uh, Tuesday night, you know, got a little workout in there, and just kind of spent the next couple days relaxing in the hotel, uh, a little mini vacation for me. Uh, really kind of de-stress on wines. Stepped on stage Saturday morning, and when I was on stage posing, the crowd was going nuts. And uh, you know, for me, that's that's huge. Um, I brought arguably some of my best conditioning of the year, a great combination of fullness and dryness. I had great stomach control, um, so I was ecstatic. Uh, during the little intermission between pre-judging and finals, I was in the hotel lobby. Um, my dad and his life partner David came. Uh, that was really the first bodybuilding show they've ever seen of mine. They moved down to the Tampa area a little over a year ago, so that was another reason why I wanted to do that show. And uh, <clears throat> so I was waiting to see them. Uh, so many people came up to me in the lobby, congratulating them on my look. Um, even people high up in the industry, like J.M. Mannion, who I've never spoken to a day in my life, got up out of his table, went out of his way, walked across the lobby to tell me how spectacular I look. So that, you know, that truly meant a lot for me. And not only that, but the YouTube videos, uh, so many people came up to me telling me how they love the videos that we're putting out, the content, um, you know, talking about my depression and, and things like that, that it really hit home with people and, and you know, how motivating it was. So thank you guys for watching the videos, first of all, and I'm truly appreciative that what I say here, um, you know, truly hits home with you guys and, and, and I can make a difference in your life. Um, so touching base on that actually, uh, before I left for Tampa, you know, as I said, one of the reasons why I wanted to do the show was not just to improve my physique, but improve my mental state. You know, my wife thanked me before I left for being a lot more open and, um, you know, just being a lot more present to her and the dogs and around the house those last four weeks. And, you know, that was one of my conscious efforts that I tried to make was to be a better husband and a better person, uh, those last few weeks and, and not be so focused, um, just on myself and my prep and uh, so you know mission accomplished all in all you know, those last four weeks went great and uh, the show went great I ended up in seventh place um, arguably maybe could have slid fifth or sixth you know we're comparing apples and oranges physiques I don't bring the mass that the guys or the you know the size that the guys ahead of me had uh, what I did bring was a little better conditioning um, and a little better detail but, you know, if you're looking for sheer mass, the guy that got six is an absolute monster. Ronnie Coleman, part two, basically, the type of mass that he carries. Uh, it's not the prettiest physique in the world, but it's, it, you just look at it and you're just like, what the, you know, it's, just, it's like that. Um, the guy that got fifth, beautiful structure, beautiful shape, tad on the flat side. But uh, again, you know, it's, it's bodybuilding. And he's got much more potential than I do. And he's got a better, prettier physique. Um, than I had so I can totally see why the judges put them ahead of me But like I said placings don't mean anything that nice little check would have been nice and then the year in two fifth places But is what it is. Uh, I walked away with my head held very high that weekend Not only for the physique that I brought but from the feedback from my peers from people I looked up to um, and from everybody on, on social media um, So it, definitely a very productive weekend. So I flew home and I only had a couple day turnaround because I was flying to Dallas to shoot with Gasp. Gasp invited me out there for the weekend. Uh, they had their fifth year anniversary at Destination Dallas. And it was kind of a trial run to see if I liked the company, if the company fit with me. You know, the weekend went great. Um, I ended up uh, shooting all day Friday. I was only to shoot for a couple hours. Some other athletes kind of no-showed slash had to leave early. So they utilized me the whole day and, uh, you know, I think I proved to them that I'm a worker and, you know, I'm always available and I'll, I'll do whatever it takes to, to get the job done. You know, got to interact with a ton of people out in Destination Dallas. They have a great gym out there. Um, got to go to the owner's house and, and meet his family and, and I truly just love the vibe that the company brought 
out there. Uh, you know, it was very family orientated. They had a bunch of people for that work in the Swedish office out there. And, you know, everybody just had a good time. You could tell that everybody enjoyed being around each other. Um, so I felt very welcomed. And uh, on the downside, uh, at the end of the photo shoot, I was moving a, helping them move a big tire to place in the background of one of my shots. And, uh, you know, typically the model doesn't do anything, but that's not me. I'm not a lazy piece of shit. So, you know, I'm not going to sit there and watch this little 130 pound girl and this other one guy try to lift up a 400 pound tire and move it. So I jumped in to help and as we were lifting it, uh, the tire was just a little too close to the wall that we were resting up against and the back side of the tire hit and that sudden jerk, I felt pop and I tore my bicep. So um, that was Friday, today is, uh, today is Tuesday, as you can see my biceps are tracked up. Uh, it was a full tear of the biceps brachii tendon um, where it attaches to the radius. So I actually just got back from orthopedic surgeon's consultation and uh, you know, he kind of went over what he wants to do to me. I have another consultation tomorrow morning with another surgeon that was highly recommended. And uh, basically I feel comfortable with either one of them doing it. It's a matter of who the hell can get me in the quickest. You know, this is one of those injuries that it just needs to be done right away. So. Uh, whoever can get me in by the end of the week is going to be winner a chicken dinner. Um, you know, is what it is. We are looking at like an eight week recovery time. Uh, I was grateful to the people at New Fit. Uh, if you guys had followed me previously on social media, you've seen the machine that they sent Stephanie and I, uh, the newbie by New Fit. And it's um, kind of similar to an Easton machine, but way more advanced. It sends a completely different type of current. It actually sends the same type of signal that your brain would send. And there's all different programming on it. So. Uh, they were actually doing a demo at Destination Dallas when I was there, and uh, uh, so funny story tying into that. So Joe Binley, the owner of Anabolic Design, was out there at uh, Destination Dallas because they're based, um, him and Frank, our VP, who live in Allen, which isn't far from Plano, where Destination Dallas is. So Joe came over to uh, the gym to go get a workout in and check in on me and, and kind of meet up, and he saw that I was you know, outside with all these fun little toys and apparatuses and Joe knows I'm an athlete and I like to do dumb things and I like to play with big, heavy, crazy objects and put my body to the test. So he gave me like a, a good 20 minute lecture earlier in that day saying, don't fucking tear your bicep flipping a tire uh, or, uh, you know, don't try jumping over something and tearing your fucking Achilles. Um, so he really bitched me out <laughs> earlier in the day and when it popped, the first thing I thought was go get set up in the newbie because one of the signals that it sends is a lengthening signal. And the most important thing when you tear a tendon is to keep the muscle and the tendon lengthened. You don't want it to atrophy and shrivel up um, because then it's going to make it harder for the surgeon to grab that tendon, stretch everything out, and reattach. So I knew right away, literally, that was the first thought in my head where's Rich in the newbie? Um, and I start walking over there, and sure enough, Joe is hooked up to the newbie. And I'm like, he's going to fucking kill me. So <laughs> I walked around. I, uh, I grabbed Donna, who was the, uh, the designer and uh, purchaser for Gas Better Bodies, who was running the photo shoot. And I said, Donna, could you please get that guy over there? <laughs> uh, so Rich came over and uh, they were kind of waiting for Joe to get away. And I was like, fine. I was like, I just got to go over there. So I went over there and, and Joe proceeded to bitch me out um, in front of everybody for doing this. And you know, was it dumb? Yes, no, you know, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, should I have been doing it? Maybe not. But again, if, if you're a man or if you're a human being, you're not going to sit there and watch people struggle do something for you. And I'm just not the type of person, entitled individual to sit there and watch people do things for me anyway. So it, it is who I what it is. It's, it's in my DNA. It's in my blood. And I'm going to do that every day, all day regardless if I get hurt or not. Um, so Joe calmed down when uh, they kind of saw that my bicep wasn't just hanging up on my shoulder here or hanging down there. So I got some treatment and we were trying to decide if I should just fly right home Friday night and try to get an MRI on, on uh, Saturday. Um, and discussing with Rich at, at New Fit, um, you know, he thought it'd be best if I just stay through Saturday and uh, you know, continue to get treatment to help keep that tendon and everything at length. Um, not only that, but I, I made a commitment to the people at Gasp, and they, you know they flew me out there in their dime. They paid me for the photo shoot and everything. So, 
you know, I just I, won't, I came out there to show them my worth. So by being there for the weekend and, and going through all the events and all the activities, kind of shows my worth to them. So, you know, I I really didn't dwell on this at all. You know, I'm not one of those people that's going to sit there and put my head, in, you know, my shoulder and cry all night and, and go hide and sulk. No, I just I went back to the hotel, threw some ice on it, showered up, went to the barbecue for the uh, fifth anniversary. And uh, I was pleasantly surprised at the end of the evening when uh, they were doing some introductions and letting people in the company talk. People that have been in the company for a long time, they introduced me as uh, a new family member of the team. So, uh, you know, even though we hadn't officially locked in contract negotiations, it was nice to know that they appreciated my efforts and they appreciated what I had to offer to the brand. So, um, you know, things aren't 100% official, but I got off the phone today with Michael, uh, one of the owners of Gasp, and uh, I told him what I was expecting. And he didn't shake a head or you know make any noise. He's like, okay. He's like, let me talk to everybody internally, and uh, we'll get some some written contract out to you by the end of the week. So I have no doubt that you know it's going to be a long term relationship with them. So I'm excited about that because Gasp is you know the premier clothing company in bodybuilding. You know, that's what you think of. You you know those iconic photos of of Branch Warren and Johnny Jackson training you know in the dungeons and, and you know wearing the Gasp gear and that's. When you're younger, that's all you wanted to buy. It's one of those big gasp jerseys and everything. So, you know, it's, it was definitely a once in a lifetime opportunity, and I'm, I'm excited that uh, to be a part of the team, irregardless of this happening. Um, so let's kind of transition back. Uh, so as I spoke to you guys previously about my plans moving forward after show. So post show, the plan was just to train for a couple weeks, um, bodybuilding style, try to get a catch a little rebound, um, build a little tissue. You know, get some of the size back that I lost while dieting, um, all while staying in shape, and then slowly transition to functional training. Uh, I wanted to get out there and, and you know start doing sprints and, and ladders and playing more basketball and doing box jumps and things like that. And really challenge myself as an athlete. And during that phase, I was going to go into a ketogenic diet with some intermittent fasting, and this is going to be the whole health portion of uh, the next phase of my life, um, or, or at least this portion of my life. You know, with the injury. A lot of that kind of gets put on hold. Um, unfortunately, I can't run because I can't swing my arm once I get surgery this week. Um, but I did start the ketogenic diet with the intermittent fasting yesterday. So right now I'm fasting for 16 hours a day. Uh, typically my last meal is right around 8 p.m. right before I go to bed. And then I won't eat again until noon. Um, and I think what I'll do is I might even extend that to 18 hour a day on off days and then days that I train because my legs still work, my left arm still works, so I'll get something in every day. You know me, I don't stop. Um, you know, I'll be back in the gym. I'm actually gonna train the next couple days before I get surgery, and then uh, I figure I'll be back in the gym training legs by Sunday if I get surgery on Friday. So on training days, I'll just fast for 16 hours, um, and that is just plain water, black coffee. I don't do tea, so I just, I wake up and I have a shot of uh, black cold brew coffee and I drink um, alkalinized water all day during my fast. When you're eating food and things like that, the proteins, um, it's kind of pointless to drink the alkalinized water. So I'll just do plain water then um, or some like stevia based soda. But uh, you know, there's no chewing gum, none of that stuff. Any, anything, no BCAs, anything that can mimic um, calories to your body you want to try to avoid to allow the actual processes of fasting and the benefits of it to work. So this is going to help reduce overall inflammation in my body. It's going to pick up, you know, insulin sensitivity. It's going to be great for the kidneys and, and just your organs in general, allowing your digestive system to really heal, um, giving the kidneys a break from the excess protein and everything else we put it through. And you can tell, like when you start fasting um, on days I do it, you have to pee a shit ton, you know, and it's not even that you're drinking that much more water. It's just, there's nothing, in your digestive system to absorb that water so you're just flushing constantly um, after the first couple of days of fasting you, you completely get used to it you know for me there's I never get any headaches I you know I don't really get the, the starvation pains um, some people will experience those but you know give yourself a solid three to four days and I promise those are gonna go away and you're gonna have great energy you're gonna feel clarity you know why you're fasting and uh, the biggest thing you know th this whole week leading into um, the, the photo shoot in Dallas and while I'm in Dallas, I'd done some fasting post show. Um, and a lot of that was to give my dad just a little break, but my stepdad was in town 
uh, and I only got to see him for a couple days. So I wanted to enjoy a meal a night with him. So here I am trying to stay lean for a photo shoot. Uh, if I ate my normal clean meals in, during the day and then had a shit meal at night, that's still an excess of calories. So I was fasting and then having a junk meal at night. That's not ideal because the whole idea of, you know, this was strictly for reducing calories purposes for me, just to stay, so I didn't go crazy. Um, you know, so when you do fast, you, you want to introduce clean foods because there you are, you've just cleansed your entire digestive system and then when you throw shit at it, you're just gunking everything up again. So, you know, doing the ketogenic diet's great. I have some dairy in my diet. I might try to back that off a little bit. I'm gonna see, you know, how I respond to it. But so far, uh, you know, two days in, no issues. So basically what I'm sticking to is over 80% of my cal caloric intake is coming from fats, uh, you know, about 18% from protein, and then very trace carbs, you know, things from, from uh, asparagus, from carbs, from nuts, you know, pecans are the best source of nuts to use during keto. They have the lowest insulin impact. So I do pecans, I'm doing whole eggs, I'm doing grass-fed beef, um, you know, the eggs and the beef are my biggest protein sources. I picked up a bone broth protein uh, that's uh, high in collagen. That's supposed to be great for hair and nails and joints. Uh, I grabbed that just because I really want to do everything possible to help with the recovery of this bicep tendon. So I'm taking one of those a day, one scoop a day, it's only 11 grams of protein um, with my grazed, you know, that's gonna help me get my antioxidants and everything else in, um, some BCAs with that. Um, and then for fat sources, I'm using uh, pecans, as I mentioned, uh, I have pecan butter that I'm using. Uh, pork rinds are a great little crunchy snack that are great for ketogenic dieting. I have, uh, what else, like guacamole, if I said that, a lot of egg yolks, coconut oil, um, a really good extra virgin olive oil, and the cheese. Uh, so that's, uh, and I have this chocolate that is uh, keto friendly, it's sweetened with stevia. It's a 80% cocoa uh, made by Lilies. You can check them out online. Um, you can get them at a lot of like health food orientated stores or really high end grocery stores. Um, so as a little sweet snack, I'll grab some of that. And uh, so that's the phase that I'm going through right now. As far as when I'm gonna be on stage for bodybuilding, I wanted to compete next year, you know, next summer. And I think that still could be within the works. I, I really wanna do this athletic phase. Um, so when my recovery gets back, you know, when I'm able to start swinging my arms and do some things, uh, I do want to transition into some of the functional training as I was talking about. I, I want to be an athlete. And not only that, but I think training like that really helps strengthen tendons and things like this. So I will avoid having issues in the future. Um, you know, it's going to get some fast twitch muscles, which I think helps with some of the detail that, you know, some athletes lack with. You know, not only that, but just full range of motion movements, you know, with bodybuilding, we're just single, single planar movement, um, where, you know, doing kettlebell swings and, and throwing balls off a wall and things like that. You're, you're putting your joints through multi-planar movement and that's going to help strengthen and secure those joints and secure those stabilizer muscles. So you're just a healthier athlete, healthier bodybuilder in general. Um, so this is going to be a really beneficial phase for me and it's something I really want to do once I get healthy enough to do it and then I'll transition back into bodybuilding. My ideal goal is I would love to do the Arnold 2020. Um, the Arnold, the Arnold Australia are the two shows that I have left on my bucket list to do. I got the New York Pro done. I made the Olympia as a rookie. Um, so, you know, the Arnold, Arnold Australia are the two big shows. So, uh, whatever it may be, whether I compete next summer or just take the whole time off and focus on the Arnold 2020, that is my ultimate goal. Uh, so whatever it takes for me to get qualified for that, or not qualified, but invited. Um, I see Arnold a couple days a week, so I think I'm gonna be able to schmooze him a little bit to let me in. Um, so that's where I'm at, guys. Uh, you know, as far as my mindset, this couldn't have happened. Better time, better place, better situation. I literally just finished competitive st stage. I plan on going through this recovery phase anyway. Um, you know, so eight weeks without training arms, my arms suck anyway, so, you know, I just have to put a little extra work into them when I get back. But, um, you know, the, the biggest kick in the balls of all this is, the one thing I wanted to focus on when I get back was my house. You know, I had my apartment I needed to finish. I have some other things around the house that, that need my hands, and now I'm laid up and I can't do that. Um, 
On the flip side, I wanted to put more time and effort into my wife and my dogs. My dogs are going to suffer a little bit because I'm going to be one-handed. I can throw a tennis ball to the left hand. Um, but I'm going to be more of a homebody. So I'm, I can't run around 100 miles an hour. So I'll be able to spend a little more time with my wife. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can reconnect a little better and, and uh, you know, kind of build on our relationship, which takes a toll uh, after 27 weeks of dieting. Um, you know, I had some conversations with some friends this weekend, spouses of bodybuilders, and you know, it's funny that a lot of us put our wives through kind of the same thing, through the same mindset. So, um, you know, just spending more time and uh, working on my relationship, and, and you know, like we should do every day, uh, working on me as an individual and being a better person and trying to figure out ways to get content for you guys. That's not boring now that I'm not training, um, but we'll find things to do, things to talk about. Um, so yeah, that's uh, what's going on in a nutshell in my life. Um, if you guys are gonna be out at the Olympia, I will be there. So uh, come see us. I know uh, Anabolic Design will be at the City Athletic Club Olympia weekend. We're gonna do some meet and greet stuff there. So come on by and see us. And uh, we're getting more content for you guys. Uh, we got some other big things coming in the works for AD itself. Uh, I believe I will be training the real one, Eric Enzo, a ex-WWE wrestler who's trying to make his way into the music scene and other entertainment venues. Uh, we just took him on board for AD and I will be training him for an eight-week transformation challenge. Joe Binley, the owner of AD, will be handling his diet and uh, I wrote him up a training program and I'll be doing some in-person training so we'll be videotaping that as well. So that'll be some content coming you guys' way. Uh, so no matter what, we got things coming. I'm having some second thoughts about where I want to live in life right now. So me and the wife are kind of debating if we're ready to make the move and get the hell out of LA or if we're just going to suck it up and stay here for a little bit. So there's just always something going on in life. So we've always got stuff to talk about. So thank you for following along and we'll touch base soon.